Kia ora, folks. We're going to get into some special cases of derivatives. So first up is the product rule. Now product comes from algebra, meaning when two functions are multiplied together, we say it's a product. So a times b, we could say that's the product of a and b. So the product rule says that when two functions, so let's say we've got f and g, are multiplied together, well, now we need a special method in order to calculate the derivative. So I've got one set up for us here. So if f at x equals x and g at x equals sine x, then multiplied together, f at x times g at x, well, we just take the functions and multiply them together. So x times sine x. Now I'm writing dots here. You may want to write brackets. That's fine. You could write x bracket sine x. Now, either way how you write it, we don't have a standard derivative to be able to solve this. So we say, well, what's the derivative of x by itself? Well, that's just a single term in a polynomial. The exponent is 1, and the derivative of x is 1. And you could say, well, what's the derivative of sine x by itself? And we know sine as a trig function is a standard derivative, and that derivative is cosine. But what about the combination of x times sine of x? Now, we can't use any sum or difference rule. So the sum rule would be for something like x plus sine x, or for something like x minus sine x for the difference rule. We cannot use those here because we are multiplying. I will use this f and g notation and we'll say f at x times g at x. I don't have to write a dot in between them if you write them side by side. We know that that means multiply. But then I'm going to put some big brackets around it and I'm going to say what's the derivative of this whole thing. So d by dx means the derivative and then square brackets, we want everything inside f times g. Now the product rule has a very specific formulation here. What we're going to do is we're going to start with f, and we say the derivative of this is f prime, and then we're going to write down g, and then we're going to add, and we're going to say f by itself, and then we're going to write down g prime. So this derivative is f prime, so that's the derivative just of x, times g by itself, and then we add, and we kind of now do the opposite. So instead of f prime, I have f by itself multiplied by g prime at x. And this is now the product rule. So this whole box here defines how we find the derivative of any function multiplied by another function. Let's go back to my example of x times sine of x. So I said f at x was x and g at x was sine of x. So I want to find the derivative of this whole expression. And I'm just going to go piece by piece. I'll just sketch in the derivatives here. So f prime at x equals 1 and g prime of x equals cosine. Now subbing in the pieces into my formula for the product rule. So f prime is 1. I'll write it down even though we don't have to. g of x is the same thing. So that's the original sine x plus, and now I have f at x is my original x, and g prime is cosine of x, and that's it. I don't have anything left undone that I need to complete. Maybe I can just do one more line without the 1 and say that this derivative is sine x plus x cosine x. Let's do a couple of examples. So starting off we have x to the power 7 times e to the x. So in order to recognize a 
product rule, what I wanna be able to envision is putting brackets around my functions and then you might want to label them. So maybe this is g of x, and maybe this is h of x. So you want to be able to put brackets around your function to show exactly how you're splitting them up between the two. OK, so what is my formula here to find f prime? So I know I need a product rule. Now if I have g and h, well, my formula says starting with the first one, it's going to be g prime, that's the derivative. So g prime h, and then you add the opposite. So it will be plus h prime g, or depending on how you write it, plus g h prime. So let's just sketch that down off to the side. So if I have g h and I want to know the derivative, so that's my prime, this will be g prime h plus g h prime and I'm intentionally using some different letters here so that you don't have to rely on the letter always being f when you're using this function notation okay so f prime at x well I want to take the derivative of my first one so let's write d by dx the first term is x to the power of 7 and then I write the second term, which is just e to the x plus, and now I have the first term by itself, so that's x to the power of 7. And then I have another derivative, d by dx, and this time it's of the second term. And I might also want some square brackets in my first term here so that you know that derivative just applies to x to the power of 7. Okay, so I'll use the power rule, 7x to the power of 6, and then e to the x, there's no derivative there, nothing changes, just rewrite that. And my next term, x to the power of 7, stays the same, and now my standard derivative of the exponential function is itself, so that becomes e to the x. And at this point, you're done. You've done the calculus, you've done the derivatives. Sometimes, though, you can see here that you have some like terms and you might want to combine or factor these out. So maybe we could factor out an e to the x and then we could say this is 7x to the power of 6 plus x to the power of 7 something like that or maybe you want to factor out x to the power 2, 3, 4, 5 or 6 it's up to you. Anyways there's no new information between these two steps. So I say simplification is not necessary. It's more of a personal preference. My next example, I have already terms grouped in brackets here. So I have this term here. This looks like it could be a quadratic equation. So I could say let's have this whole thing in brackets be g to the x. And then down the end here, the natural log, you could say let this be, let's use a different letter, let this be j to the x. And then maybe if you're taking notes before you complete the question, you can just quickly sketch some derivatives. So maybe I'll do something like this and say the derivative now, j prime equals 1 over x, and g prime equals 2x minus 3. So maybe you have some notes off to the side. So f prime at x, it's my first term, and you take that derivative, so that is this 2x minus 3. And close that bracket. Next up, I'm just rewriting my second term. So my second term pops in here, natural log of x, just rewrite it. And now I add, and I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to rewrite my first term, so big set of brackets, and just copy it down. And now the derivative of my second term, which is 1 over x. And when I 
sort of glance back and look at this. I've done all the derivatives and I'm looking for anything easy and obvious to simplify. And upon first glance, I don't really see it. So I'm not going to simplify any further. Let's just finish there. You might want to, you might want to move this x down and so you can have this second term as over x, but again, that's not required. That's just personal preference.